so periodontal principle fibers okay so these fibers are collagenous uh, in nature and it follows a wavy pattern so you can see a wavy pattern uh, when viewed in a longitudinal section okay this is a cross section this is the longitudinal section so you can see a wavy pattern so they are thought to contribute the regulation of mineralization and tissue cohesion at sites of increased biomechanical strain so when there is a strain so in orthodontic movement when there is strain and stress there will be remodeling and changes in the periodontal ligaments or the fibers so we have basically five groups principal fibers they are alveolar crest group horizontal group oblique group apical group and interradicular group it's a very important um, subtopic in periodontal ligament it may it might be asked as a short note or a long essay so let's see the five principal fibers alveolar crest horizontal group oblique group apical group and interradicular group so i have drawn all these the green color is apical the black color is oblique the pink color is horizontal the violet is interradicular the orange is alveolar crestal so let's see one by one alveolar crest group is extends obliquely from cementum this is a cementum just beneath the junctional epithelium to the alveolar crest and to the fibrous layer of periosteum covering the alveolar bone so this is the alveolar bone and it is a crest so it is starting from the cementum that is obliquely you can see this is not horizontal this is not perpendicular this is at an angle okay so this is oblique this is horizontal this is oblique so it extends from cementum just beneath the junctional epithelium and to the alveolar crest so this is alveolar crest and to the fibrous layer of periosteum covering the alveolar bone so the horizontal fibers they extends from cementum to alveolar bone in horizontal direction at right angle to the long axis of tooth so this is a long axis of tooth and horizontal is at right angle which is starting from cementum to the alveolar bone and it occupy 10 to 15 percentage of coronal root surface now we have oblique group oblique group it is the largest group of periodontal ligament fibers and it is around 80 to 85 percentage of root surface it extends from cementum in a coronal direction obliquely to bone so it is extends from cementum going at oblique direction towards the bone okay so this is the alveolar crest group which is running oblique direction this is the oblique group it's the largest periodontal ligament fibers and it is running from cementum to alveolar bone it is around 80 to 85 percentage of total root surface now we have apical group so this is apical group the apical fibers radiate in a rather irregular fashion from cementum from cementum to the apical region of socket and they do not occur in incompletely formed roots so these may occur in incompletely formed roots but apical will not occur until and unless the root formation is complete so this is uh, going in irregular fashion from the cementum to the alveolar to the socket okay so this is apical group and the last one is interradicular group so this is the interradicular group this violet one they fan out from cementum to the tooth in the forcation areas of multi rooted tooth okay so this is like multi rooted tooth they fan out from cementum to the forcation areas now let's see what are the functions of these fibers the alveolar crest are involved in retaining the tooth in the socket which opposes lateral forces forces and it prevents extrusion and intrusion extrusion is moving away from the socket and intrusion is moving towards the socket so it prevents extrusion and intrusion of tooth protect deeper periodontal ligament structures the horizontal group is restraining the lateral tooth movement whereas the oblique group 
which bear the vertical masticatory stresses and transform them into tension on alveolar bone and resist intrusive forces. So intrusive forces is towards apex. So it resists vertical masticatory forces. And the next one is apical group. So the basic function of apical group fibers are it prevents tooth tipping and it resists luxation. It protects uh, blood, lymph and nerve supplies to the tooth since it is at the apical position and the interradicular group which uh, helps in resisting tipping, talking and relaxation movements of the tooth. So these are the principal fibers of uh, periodontal ligament. It's a very important uh, topic. So alveolar crest, horizontal, oblique, apical and interradicular. You need to draw this picture very neatly and explain the origin and its end and the basic functions. Now we have various other fibers that is uh, Sharpies fibers. We already seen the Sharpies fibers. They are collagen bundles of periodontal ligament embedded into cementum and alveolar bone. The orientation is similar to that of adjacent periodontal ligament bundles and they are more numerous but smaller at their attachment into cementum than alveolar bone. These fibers in a cellular cementum will be fully mineralized but in cellular cementum it is partially mineralized and few sharpies fibers pass uninterruptedly through bone of alveolar process which is known as transalveolar fibers so transalveolar fibers are nothing but sharpies fibers which pass uninterruptedly through bone of alveolar process and the next one is intermediate plexus so intermediate plexus in the beginning it was believed that principal fibers follow a wavy course from cementum to bone and are joined in the mid region of the periodontal space giving rise to a zone of distinct appearance which is known as intermediate plexus so which is starting from cementum to bone in a wavy course at the middle region a peculiar appearance periodontal space giving a zone of distinct appearance which is known as intermediate plexus in recent time it does uh, the concept has a little bit changed so the recent concept is that fibers cross the entire width of periodontal space but branches uh, branches and join neighboring fibers to form a complex three-dimensional network so forming a three-dimensional network is the reason for that peculiar appearance of that mid region okay Next is the elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, there are three types of elastic fibers which are histochemically and ultra structurally different. They are mature elastic fibers, eulin fibers and oxytalin fibers. Eulin fibers and oxytalin fibers have been described as immature elastic fibers. So mature elastic fibers, they consist of microfibrillar component which is surrounding an amorphous core of elastin protein whereas the oxytalin fibers they are microfibrils which run in apico-coronal direction to bend and attach the cervical third of fruit and thus uh, the function of oxytalin fibers basically unknown but it has a role in supporting blood vessels of periodontal ligament and there is also tooth supporting function and eulanin fibers, eulanin fibers are bundles of microfibrils embedded in small amount of amorphous elastin. Their basic functions regulate vascular flow and role in tooth support and facilitate fibroblast attachment and migration. The reticular fibers, uh, they are immature collagen fibers uh, with uh, Staining properties and are related to basement membrane of blood vessels and epithelial cells which is adjacent to periodontal ligament. Whereas the secondary fibers they represent the newly formed collagenous element but still it is not incorporated into the principal fibers. So located between these principal fibers 
they are basically non-directional and randomly oriented. They appear to transverse the periodontal ligament space in corona, apical and are often associated with the vasculature and nervous elements path. So that's all about principal fibers. So we have seen the principal fibers and the other fibers. So next we have uh, the functions of periodontal ligament. So principal fibers are very important question. Uh, it might be asked as short essay or long essay and even a short note either any group of principal fibers. So I'll come up with functions of periodontal ligament. Thank you.